Good afternoon and welcome to Holy Cross. I just wanted to let everyone know that in accordance with the recent changes in the state mask mandate, masks are no longer required to be worn during mass. However, if you feel more comfortable wearing your mask, you can continue to do so. You will also probably notice that uh, when we are giving out communion, most Eucharistic ministers will probably choose to wear a mask. So just wanted to let everybody know that so that there's no confusion. Once again, masks are no longer required, but if you'd like to keep yours on, you can feel most comfortable in keeping it on. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Holy Cross and our Mother of Sorrows Church Cluster for all who are here and all who are watching. We are two parishes working collaboratively to build a bridge to Christ and are pleased to have you join in our Eucharistic celebration. There are two collections for this weekend, our regular collection and the Catholic Curry Journal collection. Please place your envelopes in one of the baskets around church. As always, we thank you for your continued support. Our announcements. Saturday. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that, but <laughs> tomorrow, please join the Holy Cross Catholic Faith Enrichment Video Group in viewing the Nikki Kingsley awe-inspiring Muslim to Catholic women's conversion story at 9 a.m. in the Parish Center tomorrow. On Sunday, February 20th, the Holy Cross Catholic Faith Enrichment Video Group will begin a multi-part video series on Fatima Gems about Our Lady of Fatima messages. There are many things happening in our parish from Father's article, The Youth, Knights of Columbus, A Need for Volunteers to Spiritual Events, and they are listed in the bulletin. Please be sure to take your bulletin home, read it, and mark it on your calendars. The bell choir is looking for new members. You don't need to have experience in playing the bells, just a desire to give of your time and talent to a wonderful ministry. Please see the bulletin for more details. As we prepare ourselves, let us turn our attention to the altar where the holy sacrifice of the Mass will be celebrated for by Father Marticello on this, the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time.
Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the one who thrusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in the lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who thrusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith in vain. You are still in your sins that those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hope in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the fist fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes towards his disciples, he said, 
Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in the same way. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, there is only one thing everyone in the world can agree on. Believe it or not, just one thing. And that one thing is happiness. We all want happiness, don't we? Everyone can agree with that. And not just for a few moments either. We want to be happy now and forever. Every single human person has that desire. And the fact that we all have the desire to be happy must mean that God instilled that desire within us when he created us. Which means we were created for happiness. Which also means that it is possible to achieve true happiness in this world and forever in the world to come. The question, however, is how? We hear in today's Gospel reading Luke's version of the Beatitudes. And the word Beatitude literally means happiness. But not just any kind of happiness. It means a supernatural happiness. A happiness that is out of this world. One the world cannot offer. A happiness that can only be found in God. This supernatural happiness is precisely what Jesus is referring to when he says, Blessed. Blessed are the poor, or happy are the poor. Happy are those who mourn. Happy are those who hunger. Happy are you when people hate you and insult you and persecute you because of me. Jesus says, rejoice and leap for joy on that day. And then... Everyone looks at Jesus like he has seven heads because that's not the answer we were expecting. We are so accustomed to the world's notion of happiness, one that is supposedly attained by wealth, honor, power, and pleasure. But what Jesus says today is striking because it's the total opposite. You might ask, How can the poor be happy? How can the hungry be happy? How can those who weep be happy? How can those who are hated and rejected and persecuted, how can they be happy? If we have a worldly mindset and worldly ambitions, then yes, the Beatitudes won't sound very happy to us. Instead, they will sound probably very sad and depressing. 
But if you look a little deeper into the Beatitudes, you'll find that happiness or blessedness is not so much a condition that occurs for not having certain things or for being empty or void. We often look at them in a negative sense and see them in this way. But the supernatural happiness and blessedness is actually the result of being filled, filled with Almighty God, and not with finite things that last for only a short time, things that come and go, but with God who is infinite, who is eternal, who is everything, whose love endures forever. And if we are rich with worldly things, and if we are filled now with all kinds of food and drink, and if our laughter is the cause of worldly things, and if we are held in high esteem by the world, then woe to us, Woe to us, Jesus says. Woe because these things often prevent us from coming to God and depending on God and needing God. Woe because this is the opposite of having God. Woe because we belong to the world and not to God. Woe because we are not happy and blessed without God. We are rather cursed with misery. Although, here, one may outwardly manifest a superficial worldly happiness, but within is a dark pit of misery, clasping and grasping for more and more. But the only thing that can fill that infinite pit within is the infinite God himself. And that's precisely why, my friends, St. Augustine once said, Our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. And so this is the great paradox of happiness. If you have everything but God, you are empty. But if you have nothing but God, you are full, you are happy, you are blessed, you are perfectly happy because you belong perfectly to God, because you are perfectly ordered to God. Blessed are you who have God and nothing else. This sums up the Beatitudes and what it means to be truly happy. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, there's really only one major choice we end up making with our life. And the choice is rather simple. We either choose Jesus Christ or the world, God or nothing, happiness or misery. And so, my friends, choose happiness. Choose your heart's true desire. Choose what you were made for. Choose God. Choose Jesus Christ. Choose to be blessed by letting go of the world and turning to God with all your heart by following his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. The only way, truth, and life to beatitude, to blessedness, to supernatural happiness. Yes, we may go poor, we may go hungry, we may weep often, and we may certainly be hated and persecuted for the sake of Christ. But blessed are we for we shall have God, our greatest good and ultimate end, 
the cause of our joy, the only necessary thing, who is everything. And we shall also be forever blessed by him in his kingdom for all eternity. Blessed may we be on this blessed Sunday and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one more of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father and for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith, let us bring our prayers and petitions to the Lord. general intercessions for the church that her preachers may proclaim the blessedness taught by Jesus and have the courage to stand up for his countercultural values in a hostile world we pray to the Lord Lord, Lord. that national leaders may be men and women who have learned to delight in the law of the Lord mediating upon it and applying it in their decisions and laws, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That men and women may generously open their hearts to God's invitation to serve the people through the priesthood, the diaconate, and religious life, we pray to the Lord. 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 That we may be trees planted near the flowering waters of God's grace, placing our trust and hope firmly in the Lord, and even in the year of drought, bring forth good fruit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for those who are persecuted for their faith and witness to Jesus, that they may have the grace and insight to rejoice in the knowledge that their reward in heaven will be rich and full, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For those in our book of prayers, for those who are poor, who are weeping and hungry and sick, that those who are rich and filled may see them and come to their aid, and that our prayers may bring them solace. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who have fallen asleep in Christ, that Jesus raised from the dead, may give them fullness of life, in the kingdom of heaven, especially Betty Secor and Annette de la Fava, and for Donald and Carol Day and Walt Padiak, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. 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 Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions.
We pray to the Lord. Lord. We unite these and all our poor prayers to those of the Immaculate Blessed Virgin Mary and speak them in the name of her Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for us, for those who do your will, the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, 
He humbled himself and was born of a virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and all minions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who calls. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and forget your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Drink this. 
bread. Drink this cup. Come to me and never be. If we believe.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you. You into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly with to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now, mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who are poor in spirit, Theirs is the kingdom of God. Bless us, O Lord, make us poor in spirit. Bless us, O Lord, our God.